morning, everybody. Okay. Okay, great. Can everybody see my screen? Yes. yes. Okay. Okay, perfect. So, good morning, everybody. Um, Selamat pagi semua. I think uh, uh, now actually we are actually recording it so it's like two hours and 38 minutes okay so while we're talking about wellness we're sitting down for the past two and a half hours all right so that's the irony of it um well uh, again uh, just a brief introduction uh, i'm felicia so i'll be covering on the topic of workplace environment and employee well-being okay so it sounds very like you know bombastic what actually is just like how do we get into it so from the first topic just now dr tan has spoken about it and then there is um um, and then there's uh, Sh uh, Sherry and then there's Jess talking about mental health and Sherry talking about intervention and stuff like that. So uh, I've been involved with, uh, you know, Health Junction and with uh, Corporate Wellness uh, together with Sherry and Jess and Shafiq and everybody to actually uh, work into the details of what's happening. So uh, you can see more clear clearly after our sharing and uh, how we actually make little uh, changes you know, and at the end we are making impact in organization so a little bit nudge and some of the very interesting uh, I would say uh, observation we have seen sometimes the changes does not happen during the 90 days of intervention you know, together with the screening first so we have a better data to sort of compare and work with and uh, it's very interesting sometimes the changes happen only after the intervention so regardless whether it, it, uh, people are responsive, the people in the organization employees are um, uh, responsive to uh, the uh, intervention itself uh, during the program or after. Um, it doesn't matter as long as it's working, right? So, uh, okay, next. Uh, okay, just a little bit about myself. I'm in the wellness industry for the past 11 years. So, uh, one of my main mission is to really help individuals and organizations in fitness and wellness uh, with the mission to develop a good relationship with you know the body food and fitness so uh and uh, with corporate wellness uh, you can see uh why we can make a better impact in a sense because individuals or working individuals spend at least eight to twelve hours five days or even six days a week uh, you know in the office so why uh, we eat sleep breathe you know the whole culture is there so it's so important to uh, really uh, you know uh, how, where you work is where you basically do most of things besides you know your family so the work-life balance we talk about it and um, and so yeah my mission has always been that um, so yeah, these are uh, you know like this is actually the photo from last year. So yeah, so now we are doing all online. So in corporate wellness, I developed uh, started to develop passion in uh, you know corporate wellness. Like I say, people adult individuals spend most of their hours working in the office. So it's important for us to uh, really look into it. If we want our employees, we want ourselves first and foremost to be uh, having that balance and also being productive and loving. You know, like I I, I was uh, smiling when just say try to take note of how people go into the office and people leave the office so are they demotivated are they do they love their job you know is it just uh, going there and then oh you know not again another day right so we want people to really enjoy um, you know at work because that's where we'll be spending our uh, time and effort right? and uh, this is one of the programs that we did for one of the uh, uh, companies I was invited to do like a move more and stay well uh, sitting is the new smoking just a quick uh, you know tip uh, by just sitting, you know, straight 30 minutes uh, in one go, your metabolism actually drops 90%, 9-0. So I think for the during the last two and a half hours, I was actually standing up, uh, you know, two or three times. And as well as, you know, uh, gra uh, you know, going to the pantry to grab some tea, uh, you know, some water. So this is a good way to actually just be mindful about it. So I'll just go into it, uh, what we'll be covering today. So this is like a be well workplace so uh, it's part of an intervention program but most of it is a lot of touch and go kind of concept so maybe it's uh, you know, top management or even the HR would think that oh uh, it's kind of like a waste because uh, we don't really get to the base of it so hence why uh, I would say that not just the goal we want a system and we want a complete and more wholesome program to go with it okay 
Um, and you are what you eat. Uh, I would I, I would say that uh, you know, to answer some of the questions, you know, it's all correlated. Actually, sixty six percent of you know, uh, of course, work comes with uh, you know, life comes with stress. So oh, you get stress as well. So uh, everybody has stress, but how do you manage it? Sixty six percent actually comes from the way you move and what you eat. So uh, during the intervention programs, uh, you know. We have actually done uh, preparation of healthy, balanced snacks, meals. We brought them shopping, grocery shopping. So those are things that, uh, however, uh, during the uh, program itself. So it's not just like uh, give them a 15 minutes talk, exercise, uh, you know, do the screening. You know, there is a little bit more than just that. Okay, and uh, wait, let me see. Okay. Okay, yeah, a healthy and balanced workplace, a healthy working environment for the employees towards better engagement in work and reduce workforce uh, costs, like what Sherry was saying, everything is rising, right? And improve retention, okay? It's hard to, you know, um, get good people and it's harder to even like, if, uh, if you don't even do something about it right now, you are not going to retain them. So, it's going to cut down presentism, presentism you know, increase productivity, uh, encourage more creativity and innovation in the workplace, right? So, yeah. so this session will be covering, uh, uh, you know, the three main parts, which is uh, the challenges. Five, we, we, I know we have a lot of challenges, but just, you know, uh, sort of, you know, we I sat down and you know decided that the previous companies. I think these are the five common challenges in the workplace. The reasons and effect, meaning that why is it happening and the cause and effect of it. What does it cause? Uh, why people are doing it? You know, why the challenge, uh, how the challenge can affect, right? And of course, solution, what we can do both uh, ourselves as employees, in, as individuals, and also for the HR uh, to consider and the management to consider and also you know, we will say budget friendly and, you know, you don't need to go through so many uh, tips to begin with. So uh, hopefully this uh, will give you a little bit of, uh, you know, tips um, or some ideas, uh, you know, you can take away from this, uh, you know, talk, right? Um, okay, so let's go straight. I will, you know, cover both challenges and the reasons and effects. Um, okay, so challenge number one, you know, we talked about economics uh, just now sitting wrongly okay so one of the reason you know does this photo looks familiar i think uh, most uh officers probably you know chairs may not be comfortable you know it's subjective but um it's also due to long sitting hours like i say we spend eight to at least 12 hours sometimes we don't even stand up in two hours three hours uh let's not talk about meetings and stuff like that so when you're stuck to your book you won't finish everything so hence why people are so feeling uh feeling so stressed and there's of, of course wrong posture as well so we always uh, you know we end up with you know back pain neck shoulder strain and all these things right so pain also means absenteeism because you have to go for a doctor's visit a constant medical leaves and claims and the worst part is could be presentism. So you may feel that the you know as an employee or um, you may see yourself at work, but your mind is somewhere else. You know that's like kind of the worst thing, right? Uh, you know, of course, for the company and of course for the individual, both are actually not in a win-win situation because at the end of the day, uh, you are just there, but you know you're not you're not being productive. Okay, so the next challenge. Um, taking too much caffeine, you know, I think this is like, uh, you know, a given, right? So one of the reasons why you just need energy and Malaysians are proven, you know, in the AIA vitality um, uh, survey done, you know, we are overworked uh, or working too many hours, uh, but we are also sleep deprived. So this is one thing that we we depend, you know, we became caffeine dependent and it, it turns into an addiction, you know, um, too stressed out and out of the habit, you know. So what uh, is the cause and effect of it? Basically, you know, you get irritable mood, short tempered. So of course, relationship in the office uh, between colleagues and between, you know, working uh, departments and things like that. You know? So you become uh, this person with, uh, you know, short temper, you don't work well, you know, things like that. It's already maybe given a personality or it could be just because from your mood, you know, uh, things happening from home, you bring it to work and things like that. So. Uh, bad digestion, you know, taking too much uh, caffeine, especially coffee, we know that uh, it, uh, basically will affect your digestion and the inability to concentrate as well because you become dependent on coffee, there's gastritis, headaches, migraines, heart palpitation, and so many more medical problems. So we already know that uh, 
we use that as a temporary relief uh, so that we can you know charge ourselves to you know pull ourselves throughout the day to just finish what we have to and then you know try to uh, have a life outside the office you know back to your family and back to your uh, you know try to uh, and perhaps you know not even be able to make time to do exercise because you're too tired by the end of the day right and uh, next okay so challenge number three so this is a very common problem I've seen. I walked into offices and while, well, you know, the uh, management is bringing us uh, you know, for a tour, we see snacking, you know, happening. You know, snacking itself is actually not a problem, but when the snacking uh, includes the hidden sugar, sodium, you know, empty calories, and it's just so, so uh, because, it's so bad because uh, the reason being is that you're eating those things because you're stressed, um, but it's also like a very Malaysian thing, you know, you gong see, gong see, you know, potluck and everything. So a way of socialization among colleagues and, and partially you do the snacking because it's like, oh, you know, I didn't have time for breakfast, um, you know, proper breakfast or I'm going to work through lunch. I don't have a proper meal time and, um, and that creates uh, and also because of high insulin resistance, you know, high blood sugar, it causes more craving. So you end up having coffee, you're having all these uh, curry puffs, you're having all these uh, kacang putih and things like that, right? So the cause and effect, of course, weight gain. Uh, we always talk about 50%, you know, I think more than that, you know, 50 to 60% of Malaysians are, uh, are you know, overweight and obese. So there is a huge problem and it doesn't help when you have a, a not so healthy or not so balanced snacking issue. So, of course, everything comes with a weight problem. Okay, so the, uh, so the high... Uh, cholesterol, diabetes, hypertension, high visceral fat, and you know very well when you are, you know, having all this high sodium, high sugar, uh, high calorie uh, food, um, it actually leads uh, to uh, affecting your uh, mental health. So it could lead to more problems, you know. And productivity at work is lower. Why do we need to care? Because yes, it affects your work, and uh, and this is uh, a huge problem. And I highlighted, you know, empty calories because. We are eating calories that does not serve us. There's no protein, there's no carbohydrate, there's no good fats, there is no vitamin, mineral. So that is a big, big issue. So it's a it's a cultural, uh, you know, challenge. Uh, so we need to do something. If you are noticing this in your uh, company culture or Malaysian culture in general, it's something that we need to um, uh, sort of find a solution for it, right? And uh, next, I would say uh, this is a very typical, uh, you know, uh, eating unhealthy food on a regular basis. Um, I would say that it's not so much of an unhealthy food. Food is basically quite neutral. We eat food, you know, food gives us energy. We like a variety of food. Malaysians, we love food. Uh, we use food to bond. We use, uh, you know, it's so nice to get a variety of food, especially in the nasi economy, nasi champo and things like that. So it's only, but you know, one of the reasons why we are eating all these different foods, which is, of course, also in higher calories and sugar and salt and oil and things like that uh, because there's only a few options available nearby vendors you just go where where always convenient there's no other place to go and um, most of us probably do not want to bring food from home because it's you know time it's also a hassle and then you know uh, so for a lot of people that is just not an option it's just so much more convenience and you know when the food available around you is only that limited option that's you know where you have that challenge right so of course um, again you know we talk about not just only weight gain we're talking about you know rising medical costs due to ncds productivity affected uh, after your lunch time uh, you know you'll be in like i will call it like the um, food coma or becoming an ula sour already right so then you go back to your coffee to get energy again so it's a vicious cycle and you get so down because you're moody and things like that so all these things are uh, the problem is that because we are very consistent on eating all this food and uh, this is oh, this is definitely a challenge and something that you know if you want to handle uh, you know to change that uh, make, a, make make some changes in that uh, you know the, the wellness and the well-being of the employees uh, you know the, the topic of this uh, sharing it's uh, basically to address these issues uh, that's very important to first identify what is the challenge right? So, yeah, you see, this is a very common thing. Uh, no physical activities. You know, the WHO already mentioned we need 150 minutes a week to uh, to make sure that you have enough 
uh, you know, exercise, you know, there's a recommended, you know, uh, weekly uh, exercise needed for uh, for any individual, right? So, of course, you know, the uh, intensity, uh, the frequency, the duration of it, I, I always call it FDI, right? Frequency, uh, duration and intensity. It's not just a walk in the park. You must be able to increase your heart rate and things like that. Um, and, uh, you know, one of the reasons, you know, because there's no lack of space venue for exercise, I think one of the... Uh, the, one of the programs that we did for a, uh, a company, uh, sometimes we will end up doing in the cafeteria, uh, sometimes in like a room where we will have to actually wait for them to clear up because they use it for also meetings and also is a storeroom and things like that. So um, there is actually a space, uh, you know, issue and a venue issue. So to cater for that many participants or employees, you know, so it is very limited. Okay, so no time slot given as well. Um, Limited time slot, you know, sometimes you give, you know, companies could give one hour, uh, you know, of course, during lunch uh, or one hour after, uh, before they finish work, uh, you know, to work out and things like that. And even though you have gym uh, nearby and things like that, uh, you know, you have that limited time to either eat or work out. So, uh, you know, some people will take, you know, by the time they walk from the office to the gym, uh, it's already like, you know, 20 to 30 minutes uh, or 15 minutes. So oh, it gives them a bit lack of a time. And now because of the whole, um, we are in the recovery, um, uh, MCO movement control order, uh, we have uh, definitely, uh, you know, we have to book the slot at the gym and things like that, right? So, and there's no awareness on the importance of physical activity. Um, and I will also add this on with the challenge number four, which is the, um, uh, food as well because yes a lot more of uh, the people working are uh, doing like cycling now is a very popular sport uh, they are doing Zumba activities they are doing uh, running you know but what do you do after you exercise okay so the one you can do your exercise for one hour but for the next 23 hours you are basically whatever you are what you eat as well so long working hours does not help um, you know to actually, because now uh, some are still sort of, you know, adjusting, some are working from home and in the office, but it's still long working hours um, and the stress. So when you are stressed, I think the last thing people would use it, uh, it's more of a lack of awareness here in Malaysia or culture. Uh, when you're stressed, uh, you don't really think about exercise. When you're stressed, um, S-T-R-E-S-S-E-D, you know, you uh, switch it, uh, you tabalik, the word basically is dessert, right? So we would rather go for food and uh, to release your energy, uh, your stress rather than exercise. Uh, but you know, uh, guys, but if you are really into uh, releasing stress, I think exercise, you know, you may want to consider adding that into it, okay? So the cause and effect of it, of course, you know, your bad knee, shoulder pain. I was just sharing this on one of my social media uh, posts today. Uh, for people that, you know, have intention or need to lose weight, one kg uh, weight loss can actually uh, relieve or reduce, take off 3.6 kg of pressure from your knee. Okay, so when you're not exercising, when you're not, you know, seeing the results of weight loss, uh, definitely the back, the knee, the shoulder pain, you know, and of course, incremental of medical costs, NCD uh, in the workplace, presentism, uh, mental health is affected. It's a vicious cycle, all right? So these are the top five uh, challenges, common challenges that we are all facing. Okay, so what can you do? What What is the solution, all right? So we ju just jump right straight into it. So first of all is to have better uh, posture, having a neutral positioning, you know, uh, having your eye level to your laptop, uh, making sure that your uh, your desk, your uh, chair, you know, it, it's important to voice out, it's important to uh, modify or personalize your the way that you sit and stretching every 45 minutes. And like I mentioned, uh, for me, even I actually have to stand up a few times uh, during the past two and a half hours just to make sure that I don't get, uh, I, I get you know, it's, it's when you are, I know sometimes when we are stuck with work, uh, you may just want to like finish it off one shot, but uh, do you know that it's actually not very productive because you end up staring at a blank s the screen and not doing anything. You know, you may be doing other things, scrolling other stuff, right? So it's good to just stand up and, and you know do some stretching and we have like toilet rules and things like that. Uh, maybe that's a video that uh, we can share a bit later. Um, having mindfulness, uh, that's very important. I think 
at the end of the day is to having awareness for yourself because you know your body, right? Uh, during a long meeting, wherever possible, I know it's hard for uh, for you to tell the management or the boss to say, oh, can we do a 45 minutes meeting, no, right? Maybe take a five to 10 minutes break. Um, it's important uh, so that uh, you actually get to the solution faster. And at the end of the day, uh, you actually can uh also uh, uh be more at the end of the day uh, settle more things uh, faster right so you wouldn't want to uh, drag the whole day meeting and end up with no solutions at all um, and one of the most unproductive uh things that you can do in the office is to have meetings and meetings and meetings and with no never ending meetings and no solution right so for the isha part you know, encouraging a culture of mindfulness. These are what we, uh, or I personally see in the uh, offices that some of them are really, really good, uh, is to encourage and promote mindfulness of, and uh, like posters, reminders of, reminders on elevators or stairs, um, encouraging, oops, uh, I think Shafiq is having control on my thing. Okay, no worries. Okay. Uh, OK, great, no problem. OK, good. So uh, to create that kind of uh, mindfulness, uh, you know, posters, things like that, you can put it on elevators, staircase. You know, do you know that climbing up the staircase can help you burn how many calories or remember to drink water, or remember to stand up every 45 minutes, do your stretching. Think, think these things are a little bit more budget friendly and you don't need to have like, you know, to, to, to sort of get approval or anything like that. So I think it's great to actually have that, you know, to start with if you don't have it already, okay? So encouraging employees to move more is so important. Uh, like I love, love the concept of like, you know, just asking them, are you okay? Sometimes we as, um, you know, Malaysians or Asian culture in general, we are not a very uh, confronting. Uh, we don't. We we are more like a, if we are if we are given a position to sort of like um, fight or flight, we will be the one who is like you know we won't talk about it. We end up keeping quiet and bottle up our feelings, right? And that's one of the issues with mental health. So sometimes uh, you know employees may. May not have the kind of you know to sort of a platform to sort of express what they need. So by just asking like, are you okay? Um, you know, do you, uh, what do you need? Is good for them to have that platform to give their feedback. You know, so that at the end of the day, it's a win-win situation for both. You know, the company and the individual. They like working there and they'd be more productive and everything else, right? So another solution would be getting better chairs. If not. Uh, you know, uh, reminder of like how to have more neutral positioning and reminder to uh, reminder for better posture for the uh, em uh, employees. Okay, okay, taking too much caffeine. Okay, so this is more for an individual. Like limit yourself to one cup a day. I think uh, you know it, it's not very uh, easy, but uh, it's doable. Um, so understanding that. Uh, where the problem from taking too much caffeine, where the the source of the problem is when you're stressed, when you are you want you want energy. So, getting enough of sleep, uh, you know, making sure that you have at least six to seven hours of sleep is so important. Um, and you may not need that cup of coffee. You may actually need to take probably some deep breathing, or maybe you need when you do need more energy, you should. Uh, take more antioxidants. So one of the uh, ideas is to really like, uh, or you know, sharing maybe like a switch to tea because tea actually is more has more slow releasing caffeine than coffee. Okay, taking more fruits because it not only uh, wakes you up actually, uh, like an apple because it has more fiber as complex cups it gives you energy, right? Or take five minutes break for deep breathing, um, and uh, during uh, lunchtime probably like a quick. You know, sometimes a five to ten minutes of nap, it's much better uh, than downing the coffee, right? So for the HR part, I've seen some um, uh, initiatives from uh, the you know management of providing fruits in the pantry. Um, I think that's a great idea instead of like putting all those, uh, you know, sort of like, you know, uh, cookies and biscuits and everything. Uh, I think it's good to provide. Uh, if you want to change the culture, you have to do something, right? Either um, uh, I think uh, that will be on the challenge number three, where 
employees can also bring their own uh, you know, fruits and vegetables. So, but this is also a good uh, uh, you know, suggestion for the management. Uh, providing sufficient water stations for employees. I think this is good because uh, water station can be good for people to just stand up and go get water. Pro don't just put it in the pantry, put it in a few spots so people can actually walk around. Uh, I think that's good and you can have uh, you know, discussion and things like that along the way as well. And of course, a reminder using posters is always good because it may not be, uh, people may not follow, but when somebody is standing somewhere and they end up reading stuff, you know, it could be a positive quote, could be like uh, tips on how to take a deep breath, uh, uh, do deep breathings, drink water, stay hydrated, things like that, right? Okay, so challenge number three, snacking. Okay, plan a theme in the office uh, for, you know, your maybe your department, maybe a few of your friends or your colleagues. Bring your food every day of the week. Healthy swaps, you know, changing from cookies, buns, biscuits, crackers to yogurt, fruits and vegetables. I think that's a great idea. Uh, not something too big uh, because these are the things that is not really available from nearby vendors or your cafeteria. So it's really good to bring your own. Uh, and uh, eating three main meals correctly and on time. So try not to eat on your, uh, at your desk. Um, it's very common to order something, uh, you know, from grab food or whatever it is that, you know, you end up eating. Uh, usually the easiest will be like maybe the some burgers, some chips, some fries or whatever not. So it's great to actually walk away from your desk during lunch hour, especially and have a proper meal, OK? Or in uh, the pantry where you bring your own food uh, or you eating something, you know, a bit more balanced, OK? And uh, for the management side, it's uh, of course, uh, using uh, posters, uh, healthy snacks, and providing calories and portion as a reminder. Okay, so um, and of course, encouraging. I think one of the things is that you know during birthday celebration and potlucks and meetings, you end up having all this uh, food and uh, usually the fried foods and things like that. So have a culture of telling uh, or you know. Uh, Organizing events or uh, you know the jamuan or food available using you know healthy options like fruits, uh, more like uh, some more vegetables or some colorful, not just like try to do more grill than you know and all these things. So it's so so important to actually uh, create this culture because we cannot change it from outside. Like. For us, when we go in once a week and do the intervention, we can only, you know, say, remind you once, okay, for the 90 days, perhaps. But at the end of the day, it's within the organization, you have to create this culture, okay? Okay, so challenge number four, eating unhealthy foods, right? So instead of a full lunch, I know it's a hassle, you want a convenience. Oops. Uh, oh, Shafiq, you... Shafiq, you, you don't make any changes, please. Let Shop, yeah, it went to Shafiq's like, OK, no problem. OK, good. No worries. So instead of a full lunch, I know it's a hassle to sort of bring a full lunch from home. Try to bring fruits or salad from home. So it's because these are the options that's limited when you are eating out, right? Because you go to that, um, uh, you go to the nasi uh, champo, uh, you know, uh, store, your mama or whatever, you don't get a lot of uh, options, right? So bringing your own is actually pretty good. Portion food well, you know, suku suku sparrow, you know, we always talk about having the right portion of rice, uh, you know, the size of your fist, and then your palm, you can have your protein, and the other palm, you can have your uh, vegetables and fruits, right? So, on the HR side, you know, these are things that you can do uh, without actually having any uh, costs involved. So, of course, enc encouraging employees, I have uh, feedbacks uh, from the management, usually it's like, you know, the whole uh, uh, eating area or the pantry will be smelled like fried chicken because everybody will be just ordering fried chicken and pizza and whatever not. So these are also good reminders uh, uh, for the employees to actually eat healthier. We're not stopping them from having their rights. You can, you can have like maybe creating like uh, a day or two days in a week uh, to talk about like, you know, creating like, okay, this is like, you know, fruit day or fish day or whatever, a protein day. So this is something that uh, it's important, okay? So subsidizing is also part of, uh, you know, the plan, uh, vegetable dishes. So sometimes, you know, with the nearby vendors, uh, you can actually uh, uh, have a deal with them. Like, okay, if they order food from here, you know, their vegetables will be subsidized, will be added on, you know, could be like ulam, could be like, you know, some uh, green vegetables. So those are things that one or two dishes and it won't cost a lot. And you encourage uh, employees eating more uh, greens, more antioxidants, more phytonutrients, right? 
and uh, making a deal with nearby vendors, I think is good because a lot of now, of course, restaurants are back into business. Um, they also want more sales and especially we give priority to those who are promoting healthier food um, and uh, encouraging employees to buy with them. So maybe having a deal uh, by ordering in for uh, free delivery and also maybe 10 to 20 percent discount, I think is great because directly uh, you're helping employees to because at the end of the day it's still the price factor because we still have to take out money from our own pocket so it's, it's a more practical way to um to make a deal with uh, vendors that serve healthy food right so have a lookout have a list of vendors that uh, you know you want to uh, have a collaboration with okay and challenge number five um oops Okay, no physical activity. So plan an exercise uh, session. I've, he I've heard of um, uh, colleagues that you know, plan one or two days a week at a nearby gym uh, during lunch or after working hours. It's good to always have a buddy system uh, because you, you know, kind of pretty much, unless you're very motivated to exercise, right? So if not, then, you know, having a buddy is, isn't too bad. Okay, use exercise session for team building. I know a lot of um, team building or whatever not, they use a lot of eating and makan session to sort of bond. So why not use exercise session or use some sort of physical activity to do team, team building, all right? So mindfulness of 10,000 steps and toilet rolls. Uh, so those are the things that we used to, uh, we will remind and, you know, the health ministry is really reminding. We are uh, using that to actually, uh, toilet rolls is basically I know when you go to the toilet, you know, drinking, uh, you know, you have to drink enough water, you of course frequent the toilet more frequently and you can do some, you know, stretching like modified jumping jacks, you can do some squats, you know, those are the things that we say why it's called toilet rules, okay, because you can just do, you don't need to break a sweat, it's just movement, all right, so movement is the safest cure. Um, and on the HR side, you can give a time slot and a venue for exercise activity, setting up a simple gym in the office space, uh, would help employees to save time. Uh, you don't need very big equipment. It's sometimes just exercise mats and some dumbbells and resistant bands and have a little space so that, you know, sometimes being at a nearby gym, uh, it could also because they couldn't go, although there are special deals, but, you know, time is, is, a, is also a challenge. Um, another thing is that bringing a trainer for exercise that's popular with employees like, you know, some Zumba, some strength training, some, uh, uh, you know, uh, what do you call it, dance classes and things like that. So whichever way, so we used to do this, uh, you know, before the MCO, we have been running this and, you know, some people have a variety of like trainers, like uh, teaching yoga or teaching uh, a high intensity workout, but we will modify it because we do have the data. Okay, so we do have the data to see that who has a knee problem, who has a high blood pressure, so we will actually, um, sort of uh, modify, you know, some of the exercises for uh, the employees, okay? And also reminders on elevators and staircase for the importance of exercise. So those are the things that you really do need uh, to just keep on nudging and reminding. I think that's the key, okay? So we can all play a role and benefit from it. In summary, uh, you know, uh, from the uh, management side, you reduce of absent absenteeism and turnover, reduce benefit claims, enhance recruitment and retention, enhance reputation of your organization. And for uh, the individuals and employees, improve for fitness, health, uh, lifestyle, improve your work-life balance, improve morale. Pe people actually want to come to work and uh, enjoy the work, okay? And improve of team spirit and job satisfaction, reduce stress, how to manage it and incidences of injury, and enha enhancing our relationship with co-workers. So that's all for my sharing. So um, if there's any question, um, feel free to ask, okay? Thank you so much, Abhisak. That was excellent. Um, Jess, um, yes. where are you? I'm here. Oh, you are mute. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, um, okay, since Jess is missing. No, Jess is here. I can't hear Jess. I'm here. Oh, I do. Jess? Are yes, you there? Yes. Yeah, okay. So since we are almost at 12 o'clock, so we give another five minutes for Q&A session. And then at okay, okay. uh, 12 o'clock, we start with Shafiq's talk. How about that? Fantastic. Fantastic. So any question from the floor? So for the so question, question in the chat, in the box. chat box. Okay. But I've got, but I've got some questions. questions. Okay. 
What's your question? Right, uh, right firstly, now, firstly, um, Felicia, you were saying coffee tak boleh minum banyak. But then some people out there will say cannot live without coffee lah. Yeah. Okay, so macam mana? Okay, so I when I say coffee is like a whole, uh, what people are addicted to is not the coffee. You see, like, I think especially during the lockdown, you can see people lining up from like, you know, lining up in the car, like the drive through nowadays, like all these, uh, you know, franchises, they have like drive through People are not addicted with the, you know, caffeine, so to speak. People are addicted with the, the whipped cream on top, the sugary stuff, you know, you know, the extra pump of caramel and everything. So, you know, knowing the trigger is so important. I'm not stopping you from drinking coffee, but if you're just having a, because I come from a place where I used to drink three to six cups of coffee a day. <laughs> so I know that I wasn't addicted to the coffee. I was addicted to uh, so you're you know, talking sugar. From Yes, I'm talking about from experience and of course from the clients that I work with. I used to have a client that has a two liter of coffee in the morning, two liter. I don't know where she got such a big flask, two liter in the morning and she finished it by 12 o'clock. And that, you know, and that is affecting everything because uh, it may stop her from eating, but you know, but it, it's giving her so many other issues like digestion, like say heart palpitation, and she may actually have create more cravings in terms of eating more in the office, right? Snacking and stuff like that. Yes. yes. Yeah. So it's just the understanding the effects of it uh, and uh, switching it first. I would suggest actually for people, uh, you know, my clients or uh, whoever is asking for tips, right? I say, why not you try taking my fruits and yogurt and tea to start in the morning rather than coffee? and do your coffee after lunch. It's actually, there's actually a research and a paper on, on like drinking coffee uh, mid-morning or after lunch is actually much better. So yes, yes. give it a try because you want to have like a slow releasing caffeine throughout the day. Caffeine is not bad, uh, but it's just that we are uh, addicted to it and dependent on it, you know. Actually, when you do exercise and deep breathing, it gives you the same energy. It clears your mind, you're more productive. So there's nothing wrong with coffee. It's just that if you're drinking more than one cup a day or two cups a day, then or being dependent on it, that that is a problem. Yeah. So at the end of the day, it's moderation, right? Mm, moderation. I'm not. I'm not saying no coffee. I still drink coffee, but I'm not like you know, tadarasa like gian. You know, like addicted to it. Uh, that that is the that is the keyword. I think. Yeah. I think people have substitute water with coffee, and that's not good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. 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 There is a question. Yes. Oh, uh, is there is there a question? Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, it's from Mardia. So Mardia asks, uh, can you suggest fruits or snacking that suitable, which is high in fiber or complex carb, to reduce craving and hunger? Okay. Great question. I think uh, when it's high in fiber, uh, automatically, you know, the the fruit or the, you know, vegetable itself or snacking is actually uh, on a lower GI. So it's great to uh, maintain a normal blood sugar level. Uh, I would say like things like, you know, uh, pumpkin, sweet potatoes, uh, papaya, um, apple, because you do need chewing, you know, uh, and uh, banana is all good, you uh, know, but then when you're hungry, you eat like satu sikat uh, pisang, you know, is a problem also. So it's good <laughs> to have fruits that you need to chew and with the skin. So <laughs> green apple, uh, you have uh, pineapple and things like that. Things that, that you need to chew and it's great if you eat it with the skin as well. Pear is good. So all kinds of fruits are good because the chewing allows you to slow, uh, to actually uh, improve your digestion. It's, it sends the signal from your guts to your brain saying that you're full. So if you are a big eater, I was just I was just covering this because uh, somebody was asking me about whether uh, cauliflower rice or normal rice. Okay, so actually when you're chewing more, you are letting your body uh, take the time to so, sort of like tell yourself, hey, I'm actually full. So if you're a big eater, do snack on an apple and then go for your lunch. Not not the buah lepas uh, as a dessert, right? Uh, because penjuci mulut. Because actually, fruits are better before your meal. So yeah, you can try that. Yeah. Thank you, Felicia. That mm -hmm. was really helpful. Um, we can go. To, um, so do we go with the final presentation? 
Yeah, yes. I think people might be hungry and very tired. Yes, eat, we are because because hours. we are talking about how to eat uh, on time. And it's lunchtime. Yeah, so yeah. I don't want to hold anything back. So let's just pass this to Shafiq. And don't worry, I don't want I don't want to take any anybody's time. <laughs> I, I keep it short. All right. Though. So before we get moving for lunch, let's get the Mr. Movement on air. Shafiq, <laughs> all yours, bro. Hi, hi, hi. Okay. It's on me, right? All right. Okay. Okay. Hello, guys. Um, can you guys hear me, right? You guys hear, right? Yeah, bro. All right. Okay, good. Clear. Yep. Okay, hello guys. Um, all right. First of all, um, I would like to thank all of you for joining our e seminar. Yeah, um, and thank you also for staying until now. I know you guys are tired. Uh, 